So uh, uh, with that, we'll come to the next talk. It's none other than Dr. Sirish Kumar. Thank you, sir, for coming here. Something which is considered as, you know, very simple in ophthalmology, but which can be, you know, which can really uh, spoil your day or, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> night or weeks is this is pterygium. Uh, so sir will be talking on how to manage and probably help us to understand the this is a lot better so that each one of us who are going to, you know, treat or operate on this will get a, an ideal outcome. Sir, please. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Vinay, uh, for the opportunity. And um, so this is a, a very, uh, I love this topic actually. Uh, uh, when uh, Srini told me, can you talk on pterygium, uh, I told why not? It is my favorite topic. Uh, Actually, uh, many of the surgeons think it is their, uh, uh, it's below their dignity to operate on a pterygium. And uh, this is actually a trivialization of the condition and uh, a faulty technique uh, that can lead to a, a variable outcome or a poor outcome. And uh, as such, we don't know, do not have any set protocols as to how to go about managing different types of uh, uh, pterygia. So the goal of uh, any pterygium surgery is to prevent recurrence uh, and uh, the procedure should act like a limbal barrier and uh, uh, it should have uh, minimal or uh, no complications and cosmetically it should be acceptable to the patient. Um, and uh, this can be achieved by uh, removing uh, all reactive fibrovascular tissue and eradication of all mutant uh, pterygium cells, uh, thus restoring the normal limbal barrier. Uh, uh, various surgical techniques that are available uh, and uh, primary pterygium uh, uh, is considered as a, a local ocular surface transplantation, uh, um, local uh, ocular uh, uh, limbal stem cell uh, deficiency and uh, ocular surface transplantation procedures and its modification has been found to be very effective in these cases. Uh, so this is just uh, mainly for uh, the young uh, PGs or uh, for uh, junior level ophthalmologists. It's just a routine procedure of uh, pterygium. I do it under uh, infiltration anesthesia. I don't uh, put them on uh, variable bar block. Uh, so grade uh, three, grade four uh, pterygium. Uh, it says uh, pterygium tissue and uh, careful cauterization of the bare area. Uh, excessive cauterization can cause scleral necrosis and um, I remove all these uh, fibrous additions to the uh, cornea that uh, creates a smooth surface and uh, reduces the chances of irregularity there. And uh, inject uh, lignocaine now uh, 0.5 to 1 millimeters uh, in the donor site area which is uh, superior temporal uh, conjunctiva in most of uh, my cases take uh, as thin a graft as possible. Uh, it's like uh, without uh, tenons or uh, very few tags of uh, tenons because uh, tenons can uh, lead to a retraction of the graft. Uh, so place it on the base scleral uh, area, fix it with glue or uh, sutures or uh, autologous blood. You can even uh, use uh, uh, amniotic membrane uh, for the same purpose. Uh, amniotic membrane is like if it is uh, easily available, you can use it. Uh, otherwise, like conjunctival autografting is uh, very good, very effective. There is a comparative study between conjunctival autografting and uh, amniotic membrane transplantation for primary pterygium. And for primary pterygium, the results are almost comparable. But uh, as far as uh, recurrent pterygia is concerned, uh, the results were uh, very poor with the uh, amniotic membrane transplantation alone. So amniotic membrane transplantation is uh, uh, not a, a surgery for uh, uh, recurrent pterygia, but conjunctival autografting uh, is effective in uh, recurrent pterygia also. So there are occasions, conjunctival autografting is the gold standard in the management of uh, pterygia, but uh, there are occasions uh, where the superior bulbar conjunctiva is not available, uh, such as patients with the filtering bleb or uh, glaucoma suspects or a double head pterygium where uh, the bare area is large and uh, you may not get a, a big uh, chunk of conjunctival tissue. So in such cases, what you can do is you can uh, do what is called a conjunctival tissue graft from pterygium. Uh, it's a 
Okay, it's not working. Okay. So uh, you take a, a tissue that is a epithelial sheet from the conjunctiva, keep it aside, then you uh, remove the fibrovascular tissue and place this graft on the bare scleral bed. This is the conjunctival tissue graft and uh, I have subjected this uh, conjunctival uh, epithelial sheet uh, for histopathological examination and uh, found that uh, it contains it almost uh, similar to uh, what we see in a virgin conjunctiva and uh, but it is thick, it is around 8 to 12 uh, layers of epithelium uh, with the goblet cells and uh, capillaries. Uh, there is no atypia or uh, there is no dysplasia of cells. Uh, it uh, definitely acts as a sheet uh, in the bare sclera and uh, can be used uh, for uh, pterygium. So this is the surgical procedure of uh, conjunctival tissue grafting. Uh, I inject uh, uh, lignocaine underneath the pterygium tissue and carefully separate the uh, epithelial sheet alone uh, uh, from the pterygium. And uh, once uh, that is separated, you keep it aside. Remove all the fibrovascular tissue uh, of pterygium. Then uh, place it on the base scleral bed either fix it with glue or suture it. So this works well and I have even published this uh, uh, concomitant use of conjunctival tissue graft uh, and the results uh, were comparable actually. The uh, recurrence rate was uh, less than 5% uh, in primary pterygia. And again, I even compared uh, it with the inferior conjunctival autografting. Um, so these are all like inferior conjunctival autografting is also done for similar indications. Uh, just wanted to confirm, compare it uh, with inferior conjunctival graft. And as far as the results were concerned, it was uh, almost similar as far as the recurrent rate was concerned. Coming to uh, double head pterygium, this is again a, a difficult management problem. Uh, you have all the options of conjunctival autografting. There is a slight modification of conjunctival grafting, like uh, you can take graft from superior and inferior bulbar conjunctiva, or you can split the uh, superior graft uh, uh, either horizontally or vertically. You can uh, uh, place this graft with orientation, that is the limbal orientation or without limbal orientation. And uh, you can even uh, take a, a conjunctival uh, uh, tissue graft or you can use amniotic membrane. So uh, if you see here, uh, like uh, is, uh, I have split the conjunctival graft into two pieces, uh, but if the defect is large, you will not be able to cover the entire area here, entire bare area. So you are left with the bare area here, which actually allows the conjunctivalization to happen. You can uh, end up with the uh, recurrence uh, from the sides. So uh, in such cases, what we can do is you can slide the graft down and uh, cover it, the cover the bare area entirely. This is a vertical split conjunctival autograft without the uh, limbal orientation. Works very well. Uh, the results are good as far as the recurrent rate was concerned. So. So if you have uh, uh, a large area of uh, uh, superior bulbar conjunctiva, then you can split it and uh, without limbal, uh, without uh, changing the orientation, you can place it. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, place it uh, vertically uh, without limbal, limbus to limbus orientation. That works well. So this has been uh, published in uh, uh, IJO 2017 and uh, we reported this is a, a double head pterygium, 89 cases we included and uh, uh, the recurrence rate was uh, less than 5%, 4.4% to be precise. And uh, we even uh, published a, a long term uh, uh, results of uh, unconventional way of doing this uh, pterygium accretion with the uh, double head uh, conjunctival autografting. Uh, so it was published in OJO in uh, 2019. Uh, so horizontally split conjunctival graft. Again, uh, you can split the graft uh, horizontally and uh, place it on the base scleral bed. 
and uh, not showing the uh, surgical video because of uh, want of time. Again, we compared it with vertical uh, split conjunctival autografting. The results are comparable. Uh, results are good. Uh, even uh, if the conjunctiva, you, if you don't have a uh, large uh, conjunctiva, you can even split it uh, uh, horizontally and uh, use it. So, uh, second, uh, the next uh, is a second donor graft. If you have taken a, a graft from uh, uh, the superior bulbar conjunctiva, if you are uh, uh, having a, a pterygium or a recurrent pterygium, if the pterygium is on the other side, this is actually this particular patient had a pterygium excision done on the temporal side and there is a graft here, I have taken a graft from uh, the superior bulbar conjunctiva and now the patient has come back with the uh, nasal uh, pterygium, quite a significant pterygium and uh, so you could have taken an inferior graft or you could have taken an amniotic membrane graft but uh, if you uh, can uh, uh, dissect a graft from the superior bulbar conjunctiva there's nothing like it um, you can do it uh, because like uh, if you have not included uh, tenons in the first graft so easily you can take a sheet <coughs> from the donor area second time It acts like a barrier and prevents conjunctivalization. This again we have published uh, in uh, IJO 2021 uh, and only one patient out of 23 patients had a recurrence. Coming to recurrent pterygium, uh, so uh, there are two types of recurrence. This is the corneal recurrence and uh, the on the right hand side is the conjunctival recurrence. We need not do anything for this conjunctival recurrence. It's only for the corneal recurrence you have to do something. You have to uh, excise it and uh, place a graft. And uh, what are the options available for recurrent pterygia management? Uh, we have mitomycin C with or without uh, conjunctival autografting. Conjunctival autografting alone can be tried. Conjunctival limbal autografting uh, or conjunctival autografting with slit or amniotic membrane transplantation with slit. So mitomycin C in the concentration of 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 percent. Uh, for five minutes uh, has been tried and various authors have uh, 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 described uh, different uh, protocols. It can be used intraoperatively or it can be used postoperatively and uh, as postoperatively as drops intraoperatively you can uh, soak a vex uh, vexel sponge with the 0 0.2, 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 percent uh, mitomycin C and uh, place it on the beer sclera and uh, then thoroughly irrigate it and uh, then uh, place a graft. <coughs> Gives excellent results. And uh, there is a, a comparison between 0 0.02 to 2% to 0.4%. Uh, so equally, both are equally good as far as the recurrent rate was concerned. So you can use a lower concentration since you are going to achieve the same amount of uh, uh, recurrence uh, with the 0.04 percent, so you can use a, l a, l a lower concentration for uh, if you are using mitomycin C. And uh, mitomycin C was compared with the limbal conjunctival autotransplantation. Again, uh, the results were comparable as far as uh, recurrence rate was concerned, but uh, mitomycin C has its own uh, side effects. So uh, there's a group of people who have uh, compared intraoperative versus postoperative mitomycin C and uh, there was no significant difference as far as uh, recurrent rate was concerned. But uh, so pterygium is not a blinding condition. Uh, you, it is unacceptable uh, to <coughs> see a patient with this complication. It's a blinding uh, complication. So it has to be used. I don't uh, use uh, mitomycin C for my pterygium cases. And in recurrent pterygia, my uh, procedure is uh, extended resection of uh, pterygium. I usually resect the conjunctiva uh, one millimeter beyond the normal uh, uh, conjunctiva. And, uh, and the tenons is uh, dissected uh, half uh, 0.5 millimeters behind and beyond the cut conjunctival margin. So oh, this is an extended resection I do for all my recurrent pterygia patients and uh, I include a thin block of uh, limbal tissue in the graft uh, from the superior uh, <coughs> limbus. 
So this is the uh, extended resection with the limbal conjunctival autograft. It gives excellent results. So we published this in International Journal of Ophthalmology, and uh, uh, so the uh, the recurrence rate was less uh, with this. And uh, regarding uh, fixation of the graft, uh, we have <coughs> tissue glues uh, uh, and uh, autologous blood or sutures. Autologous blood, uh, uh, like uh, tissue glue, of course, we use it uh, uh, routinely. Autologous blood uh, can be used if you don't have access to uh, tissue glue. Uh, so you should uh, allow a very thin uh, layer of uh, natural fibrin cloth to form on the uh, the sclera and there should not be any active bleeding from a big vessel and uh, slightly oversize the graft uh, by around 0.5 millimeters. It should be a very thin graft, it should not be a thick graft with the thinner, it won't stay. Uh, so it should be a thin graft and then uh, uh, slightly oversize it and uh, either you can tuck it or you can cauterize the margin that actually helps in retaining and uh, uh, two minutes okay and eye patching is mandatory uh, for autologous uh, blood graft fixation because uh, uh, the adhesion is poor as compared to uh, tissue glue so eye patching overnight patching is uh, recommended in these cases and uh, we compared all three <coughs> fixation procedures like uh, glue versus autologous blood versus graft fixation uh, versus uh, sutures. Sutures and uh, uh, glue, uh, the results were comparable, but uh, autologous uh, blood uh, fixation, uh, we have lot, lost a uh, few grafts and uh, some of them uh, came back with the recurrence. Uh, So last two procedures, graft edge cauterization, uh, I do it uh, for most of my cases uh, with uh, blood fixation, uh, autologous blood fixation grafts. It actually uh, prevents uh, graft from uh, disappearing on the next day. You fix it, you cauterize the edges, it will stay. The next procedure is uh, tuck in. You can uh, tuck it uh, under uh, the cut conjunctival uh, margin. Slightly oversize it and uh, tuck it. It stays. Again, overnight patching is uh, mandatory in these cases. So this was published in Oman Journal uh, by us. So these are all the manage, uh, uh, different uh, Mm, surgical procedures that are available for uh, management of uh, both primary and uh, recurrent pterygia. And uh, for PGs, uh, uh, like uh, to prevent recurrence after conjunctival autografting, there are a few points. Uh, it should be like uh, insufficient graft size is one of the reason. So if you see here, it's a small graft and you have a bare area here uh, and uh, the conjunctivalization can happen through this. And uh, thick graft, if you take a thick graft, it can lead to retraction and uh, can cause uh, conjunctivalization or uh, loss of graft sometimes. And inversion sir, of the graft. Sir, yeah, over. time. Mm. Yeah, last slide. We okay. do have time. You can finish. Uh, can okay, go. okay. So the last point is uh, inadequate uh, peripheral, uh, peripheral excision. You can see a knuckle of tissue uh, which is uh, encroaching upon the cornea. So you have a nice graft here, but uh, the knuckle of tissue which is encroaching upon the cornea here because of inadequate peripheral excision. And uh, persistent inflammation is another cause for uh, uh, recurrence. So uh, to conclude, uh, so there are uh, essential factors which we have to consider. Adequate removal of uh, fibrovascular tissue uh, when you are excising the uh, pterygium tissue. You take a slightly large graft, thin graft, and adequate stabilization of the graft is very important with proper orientation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh,